Um, I've been cosplaying at Armageddon now since 2007, but thanks to the same here, who is my mum, I've been doing it pretty much my whole life. She used to dress me up as Tinkerbell as a child, or like Wednesday Addams and that, went through a phase, it was great. Um, so I studied makeup and special effects makeup at the Karabakh Academy here in Auckland. And after graduating from there, I worked as a makeup artist in a hair salon for a year. So I kind of know what I'm doing. But I do still just make it up a lot as I go along. Um, I'm incredibly passionate about makeup and I believe it's an amazing trans transformative tool when used in cosplay. It can become the icing on top of a cosplay cake. <laughs> So, um, why use it with cosplay? You spend all that time making and sourcing your costume, so why not go that extra mile to transform your face as well? Makeup can be used to cover up imperfections, change your skin colour, change your features, or for decoration. And the best part, there are no rules. You're only limited by your own imagination. Come in! <laughs> oh, nah. Jokes, bye. <laughs> Sorry, I'm probably didn't put it on. There you go. Hello, Hamora. Are we locked in? Oh, Excellent. No. You can never leave. <laughs> well, I think you're locked in now. Wait. <laughs> cool. Go. Go talk. So, 11 o'clock. Thanks, thank you. It's fine. Oh, there is. <laughs> so, where do you start when doing makeup? So, first things first for me is pretty basic. What does your character look like? That's obviously going to decide on your finishing, on the finished look. So what you want to do is find as many reference photos as you can of what you're going to be doing. Um, so you want to think about things like, is it a super glam look that you're going to be going for? Is it a cartoony look? That sort of thing. Do you have super kawaii eyes? Do they have blue skin? And importantly, will you be wearing contact lenses? I find that it's so much easier to start a makeup by putting your contact lenses in first because that way there's no chance of getting dust or anything caught in between them. So you put them in first and you don't have dirty makeup hands when you're doing that. That's just something I find. I actually hate wearing contact lenses, so you never buy me in those. I've had a really bad experience with it myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's why I'm just not wearing yeah. them anymore. I had like one eye like that after a long time. Yeah, so I had a panic attack the first time I used them. I put them in. I think someone's just... trying to take my eye out. It's yeah. just... I was like crying to my boyfriend going, take me to the hospital, I can't get it out. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, when researching the characters, another thing I like to do is see if any cosplayers have done it before me, because that way um, you'll get heaps of ideas from them, especially when it's a cartoon character, and say, you know, you don't really know how well the cartoon makeup will translate to real life, so it's really cool to see somebody who's done that before you and steal ideas from them. Like before the big day, is do a whole bunch of trial looks as well, so that way you can perfect your makeup before the day as well. So, um, where do I start? So, the first thing I do is skincare. <laughs> so, um, you want to prep your face as much as you can because it makes it e um, easier for the makeup to apply. So, um, I always use an exfoliating face scrub to get all the dead skin scalps, dead skin cells off your face. And then from there we'll go in with a moisturiser. I usually use sunblock because it's a great moisturiser and it also gives you that sun protection because you never know when the sun's going to come out. And then secondly, I've brought my makeup here. We'll go in with a primer. So this is the one I like to use. So we just pop it on the back of the hand here. Do you have any issues in photo shoots with flashes blowing out with the sunscreen on? No, I don't, because by the end of the look, the entire thing's covered and by all the powders and stuff you end up putting on at the end diffuses all the flash blowing. So, um, when I'm using makeup as well, I always put it on the back of my hand because that warms up your product and then it makes it easy, easier to apply to your face because it goes on a lot smoother. So, with primer... <laughs> Sit down, you dork. <laughs> so, just look up like that one. So you just want to go in there and with this primer what it does is it fills in all your pores and it stops your makeup from creasing and it also helps it to sit on your face for the entire day and I have not found anything as good as this particular one. What product was that? So that is the Benefit Professional. Towards 
the end, I'll tell you about expensive makeup versus um, drugstore makeup. This is one of my products though, that if you can afford to go the, spend the extra money, definitely get this one. I've got two that I just can't live without, but they are a bit pricier. Oh. So her face is all nice and primed now, so that just goes on everywhere. And secondly, I'll go in with a foundation. So when your foundation matching, the best place to check it is along your cheekbone here. You never ever check makeup against your arm because I don't know if you can tell our arms are a hell of a lot different to our face colour. So always go in there. And once again, just putting the product on the back of the hand here, warms it up. And this is the foundation brush I use. It's a really, really soft bristle brush that just helps spread the makeup on easier, helps keep it streak free. So then what I do is I just dab a few places on like this. Don't get discouraged. Is um, don't get discouraged when you're doing it if it doesn't actually look that great because you won't know how good it's going to look until the final um, piece. So I always find that when doing makeup, I'll put my foundation on. I'm like, I look like a ghost. What is this? <laughs> remember to blend foundation into your neck or else it looks like you're wearing a mask and it's, it doesn't look right. <laughs> underneath mum's eyes. She doesn't have bags under there, but um, if you do get dark circles under there, you use warm colours to counteract that. So when you put it on like over a purple colour or something, it'll help um, make them less noticeable. It's all colour wheel stuff. <laughs> concealer and this is where highlighting and contouring comes into play um, so with this light one here I'm going to put it on all the features that I want to bring forward because anything you make lighter it will make them pop and counter wise everything that you put dark on will make it recede so we'll start with the light here so once again on the back of the hand to warm it up use it blend it into the rest of the makeup you have there and with makeup it just takes a lot of practice like I used to be hideous when I first started I used to think it was really cool just to get a black eyeliner and just like 
crayon into my eyes. I was like, yeah, look awesome. Uh, I just picked it up and I just kept playing at it and playing at it and I like to think I've improved quite a lot since I first started. everything we've done here so that this will help stop it from sliding during the day or shifting in that so um, I've got a powder foundation here and a little fluffy brush like this so you just want to load your brush up like that and then you just want to dab into the face you don't want to do strokes like this because that's going to shift your makeup you want to dab like this and it helps set everything that you've just put on the face see she is looking quite pale now so in this part I like to bring out a contouring kit so I'll show you this here this is a new one I picked up the other day I'm still not sure how I feel about it but as you can see we've got a whole bunch of dark colors in here so we'll use those to go in and bring our cheekbones back out then we've got some blush here which I'm going to pop on the cheeks just to give them a little bit more color so she doesn't look so sickly and dead <laughs> which is fine if you're playing oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is my contouring brush which I actually just broke it this morning actually. I was tapping it on the side of this and I just tapped it too hard and it flew across the bathroom and I'm like, alright, <laughs> I didn't need that today. So like I said before, we're going to go in with a darker colour here and just put some definition back into her face. So as you can see, this is giving you a line where to carve your face back in. That's really good to use as a guide. cheekbones there. Sometimes I do the temples as well, just to give a little bit back to the face. And another one I like to do is along the jawline as well. That just makes it nice and sharp. I'm not usually a big contour on myself just because I like doing 1950s sort of makeup. That's my forte and they didn't do a lot of it back then. But I do find it is really helpful for cosplay makeup because um, with flash photography and that, I find if you don't do it, it does sort of just wipe your face out. So if you put more of the colours back in, you're going to have a nicer result in your photos. blush. Blush is totally up to you where you want to apply it. Like I said because I'm classically inclined I usually just do it on the apples of the cheeks but you can take it right up to the temples. You can actually start at the temples bring it all the way down like I said at the beginning there's no rules it's literally up to you guys.
You can see that instantly has given her colour back to her face. She'll look so washed out. <laughs> oh, and now I'm going to go in with a highlighter again. So I'm going to use this lightest colour here and just really put it along the cheeks just to give a little bit of oomph to it. stroking like that you're pulling stuff off. So I'll just tap it in there. Another good thing I find to do as well is go in with a light colour like this and cover the entire lid because once again if you're using bright colours and neons it'll give you that extra bit of colour payoff. Again, that's almost an instant result. You can see the definition coming back. And then I'm going to go in with an even smaller brush than the one I just used with an even darker colour just to give that extra bit of pop.
a fluffy tip brush, fluffy tipped brush like this. We're just going to blend out some of those harsher edges. So all you do with that is just go in there, swirl it around a bit until it all starts looking cohesive. When I'm doing underneath the eyes, I like to go in with an angle line brush like this. So that's just really good for getting into tight places like this. Because I'm only wanting to put a little tiny line under there. back in with the brightest white eyeshadow that I have and I'm just going to put it in the corner of her eyes here just to make them appear bigger which is great for Disney characters you just literally just load up a brush pop it in the corner of the eyes like this as well just in between those two colors to really bring out the brow bone and once again just give all those layers of dimension there we go. cool so that's pretty much the eye makeup for this done so now we're going to give her some eyebrows it's part of the reason why i picked my mum is because as you can see she doesn't actually have any so i thought it'd be good to show you guys exactly where i start with this I've got here is an eyebrow pencil. This one's in quite a light colour because I thought it wouldn't contrast too much with the white hair. So you just want to follow the natural shape of your eyebrows if you're doing a basic makeup like this. If you're doing crazy anime then you know draw the McDonald's signs on or whatever you feel like doing. So you're just going to use a light hand and just do feathery strokes. Just following that natural brow. Light hand, feathered strokes. So, this is serving as the base for the powder that we're going to put on next. So now I'm going to go in with the 
the darkest colour in here and just use it towards the end of the eyebrows. That gives it a nice little ombre effect. It just looks a little bit more natural. just down below the waterline as well so to really open up an eye you could start there and just slightly overdraw it underneath the eye and then the black line that we've done there do that underneath the white line that you've just done so unfortunately I'm not doing that today I'm just doing it in the waterline look up anything on me during the day. 
and I apply it with a brush, which isn't good for beginners. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice. Hello. <laughs> It takes a lot of practice to be able to apply eyeliner with a brush. Um, a good one for beginners is um, a liquid liner and they come with the brush inside of the, um, it's a two-in-one thing, things inside the tube and I find that's really awesome for getting nice clean lines. And once you're feeling confident, move on to a gel. They say that we're going to stuff this up now. <laughs> So I'm just going to put this along the lash line and that's just going to help darken up the eyelashes even more. don't want to apply them straight away because they're not going to stick yet if you're using this latex glue. Um, you want to wait a couple of seconds for it to get tacky first so that way as you apply it to the eyelid it's actually going to stick on. Because if I just put these on now as wet as they are, they just fall straight off. So I'm just going to set those aside and move on to the lips. So, when doing the lips, this is another thing that's totally up to personal preference. Um, because I'm using a lipstick today, like an actual solid tube one, I'll be going in with a lip liner first. Um, usually, in my own life, I use a liquid lipstick, and I don't need to use a lip liner with that, because I find that that has amazing staying power, and the color's really pigmented, and it won't shift during the day. 
but with lip liner it's basically just another step in prepping so that it doesn't come off during the day. close your eyes there and just pull the eyelid up. Hopefully it's just stuck. So I'm just popping them as close to the lash line as possible. Don't open your eye.
you done? Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> because she's a fairy. Guys, you have lots in your eyes. This is just a glitter spray I picked up in America. It's just awesome. There you go. <laughs> attention to is affordable makeup versus high-end makeup. Does it actually make a difference? Um, and I'll be honest with this, amazing things can be achieved with cheaper products, but I tend to find you go through them so quickly. But, um, stuff that you buy at farmers and that, you just you go through it because I find they're not as pigmented as something that you might pay a little bit more extra for. And um, yeah, so you end up using a lot more of it. And with the more expensive products as well, my personal experience I have found that they do last longer so you're not having to apply as much as it during the day. Um, do your research before buying makeup. <laughs> Just find out what works best for you and your skin type. There's all sorts of things out there like you can go to most makeup stores and get samples of things so I recommend using samples before you buy things. Um, and if I had to limit myself to splurge on only two expensive items it would definitely be this one here, the first thing I use, the Benefit Professional. Because it practically erases every pore and leaves your skin incredibly smooth. And under your eyes it helps with cre the prevent creasing as well, which I find is a big hassle with makeup. And then the second one is this one here. <laughs> so, um, this one's a bit tricky though because you can only buy it at duty free in the Auckland airport. You can buy it online but that's the only physical location I know of this one in New Zealand. But I really recommend it. Like, I almost cried when I ran out this week and I didn't have any left. I was like how am I going to get that? It doesn't exist. But one of my friends from work hooked me up so it was really good. But yeah, um, use it after you've finished your makeup. Just gratuitously ba bathe your face in it and it will stop everything from sliding off, but I've never had an issue using this. I can use the cheapest makeup that, you know, I could buy $2 shop makeup, put this on, and it's not gonna come off. That's how good this stuff is. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering if you had any recommendations for like sensitive skin product wise. 
because I feel like a lot of foundations and powders are called luminous. Yeah, um, what I've got here is actually my translucent powder. Eyelashes going all feral green. It's the translucent powder I use, is the Chi Chi one. Oh. And as you can see, it's talc free, it's oil free, it's colon free. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but it's like paraben free and everything. Just look for um, blank cups that have that sort of thing with it. Um, but yeah, once again, it's just a matter of testing stuff out. I find MAC's really good for sensitive skin, so I use theirs a lot because I'm prone to breakouts, so using that for me has really helped as well. You wanna? Some of the bed gray makeup's also better than cheaper yep. stuff. That too. But um, Ben Nye is really good. I've used them for quite a few things. Yeah. But this is all just like stuff that you could also use for every day as well. Yeah. Um, what's your recommendation for like a setting spray for body, body paint? <laughs> <laughs> this is my Urban Decay All Nighter. Um, it's good for setting absolutely everything. If you can't get your hands on this one, a good one for body paint. I've got a little mini one in here. leave the skin quite tacky. I don't know why it does, but I have found, because we use that over in America, 37 degree heat, and we sprayed our entire faces with it, because we were doing Joker and Harley. And of course, my arms were painted completely white as well, and I sprayed that, and it didn't budge. Or if you're really cheap, you can use baby powder. Like I've, um, I can't breathe. <laughs> I've done um, Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas, where I was completely painted blue. And yeah, use baby powder on that, and I didn't have an issue with it rubbing off. But I think that was also because it was a lower temperature. Yeah. So I, I don't know how baby powder reacts in high temperature for a long period of time yet. But yeah, if you can get your hands on that Urban Decay stuff, definitely. Cool. Anyone else? Yes. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm going to go see the Weasley twins now. <laughs> And if you guys do have any more questions or anything, just feel free to leave comments on my Facebook page. I'm more than happy to help people out with anything. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>